After we calculate the density value, then we're ready to show the density as a map. There's basically two common ways to show the density as a map. One is to use gradual color and apply that color to either uniform grid or irregular shapes, okay, like the census tracts or counties. And the second way to do that is to show the density as uh, dots. Okay, so each of the dots in this area represents a, a number of the distribution. Let's talk about a dot density map. This is one of the two ways we're going to cover in this course. Well, dot density basically uh, use dots to represent the idea of density rather than the real location. For example, the map on the left showing the uh, location of business in for real, so the, the coordinate represents the actual location of business. However, if we represent the density idea, we can also use some kind of distribution of dot to get the idea so the number of dots reflect the uh, kind of density in a particular area, but the location is not reflecting the real business location. So just be careful when you try to interpret map. Read the title, read uh, the legend, and see what the dot represents. So in order to make a dot density map, you need to calculate the density first and create a new attribute of the map data then you can draw the map as or dot density. Okay. So in this case, we have a choice of using how many dots or what the size of the dots. Um, use that to represent density ideas. So you may still ask the question, why do we need dot density map? And some of you may argue that, okay, just look at the location of business over the map on the left. You get the general idea of the distribution, right? So if you look at the densities, okay, well, what does the density map on the right bring that is, is not available from the real location map on the left? Well, here's the argument. When you have um, area that have very densely populated entities, you basically see a big clouds of things and uh, basically kind of occupy all the space. And you suddenly lose the sense of how much or how many uh, are out there. Okay? The dot density map allows you to be able to show the density ideas are much better because they can actually distribute the points more randomly as long as the points are within that particular area. Okay? So that gives you a, a relatively better idea uh, of the density. So think about it and uh, make sure you understand why we do the dot density map for a certain advantage. If you have count data on regular or irregular shapes, the dot density map also brings something new to the table. For example, you could show the population by census tracts as count uh, and then you're going to see that some of the small tracks actually have the same number of people for, compared to the larger tracks. If you show them on the map by the counts, then they will be shown as the same color. However, they are different in terms of density. By doing a dot density map, you can bring that difference up to the uh, visual form. The map on the right is a dot density map that shows the two area at the bottom right. One is the larger area, one is the smaller area. They have the same number of people in their track, but we represent them as dot density, and it's very obvious that the smaller track have higher density than the larger track. For aerial density map, we have another alternative is to show the density value as shades of colors. In some cases, this may be a better solution because uh, we find that some of the audience may tend to interpret the dots as real location, okay, which is not. Uh, so to avoid that kind of misinterpretation, color-coded density 
might work better. The other advantage of color coded density is that you may be able to show the real location as points, at the same time showing the density as a color coded aerial map. So both the count as well as the real location and the density are all shown in one map. Uh, this is an advantage, and uh, you should be careful to choose which one you want to use. And try to understand what is the advantage or disadvantage of each choice. So let's talk about what can you say or what can you do with mapping density by area. Now, this is more about interpretation. One of the common use of density map is to see where the highs and lows in terms of density. But it only show you the highs and lows in the units of area. Okay? You would not be able to identify the specific clusters or centers of highly concentrated localities. Okay? In some applications, those density by area may be enough. Other cases, it may not. Okay? So you should consider if you do need to have shown very precise the, where the density centers are, you may want to use the regular grids. Uh, that probably a better choice. The second use of density map for area is to compare one or two or more areas that try to find out why one area is, is doing different from the other area. Okay. So we can think about the school district, how many graduates going to college, and you can compare uh, that as a density. Okay, so. Um, and that gives us idea of how one school district compared to the other. Those are the kind of applications. And the third kind of application is that when you try to apply certain criteria to select an area, okay? so maybe uh, the area you're interested in may have to fall into certain, certain criteria, and one of them could be the density. So for example, if you want to open up a business, in a particular zip code, and you want to make sure that uh, there's a certain density of population there so you can uh, have some profits. So these are the considerations. And what you can do when you face the, the dot density map or area density map, try to see what's the purpose of be useful and then try to say something about uh, what can you pick up. So we talk about hotspots. We talk about comparison between areas. We talk about any useful criteria for you to focus on certain area units.